Hi everyone, I'm Bree. I'm 16. My mom left me when I was just a baby. I never knew her. My dad says she couldn't handle the responsibility of raising a child because she was too young. One morning, she went out to the grocery store and never came back. My grandmother raised me. My dad would visit us often, but it was my grandmother who was my real parent. The time I lived with her were the best years of my life. When I was 12, my dad remarried. His new wife had a daughter the same age. My dad took me to their house to meet them. I stayed there for one night. His new wife completely ignored me. Her daughter Sadie was only interested in her phone. It was pretty obvious that neither of them liked me. But I didn't care because I thought I would never have to live with them. But unfortunately, when my grandmother passed away last year, I had to move in with them. My stepmother started treating me badly from day one. She made me do all the housework. I even had to clean Sadie's room. She was incredibly mean to me. For example, during breakfast, she'd say, aren't you full yet? You've had enough to eat. Go take out the trash. I was really unhappy, but I didn't tell my dad about it so as not to upset him. He was working in the finance department of a big real estate developer. The finance manager transferred hundreds of thousands of dollars into his personal account. My dad didn't know anything about it, but he got arrested anyway. He didn't have the money to hire a good lawyer, so he ended up going to jail. My life wasn't going great to begin with, and when my dad went to jail, things got even worse. One day, my stepmother told me, we're broke because of your father. You need to quit school and start working. If you want to live here, you need to bring in money. So I had to drop out of school. Of course, this rule did not apply to my stepmother's daughter. Sadie kept going to school, but I had to get a job at a call center. Since I had to deal with one stressful event after another, I got acne all over my face. I couldn't recognize myself in the mirror. The people I worked with looked at me with pity. There was this guy I liked. One day I heard him mocking me saying, this girl shouldn't leave the house. She has no right to make the rest of us uncomfortable. <laughs> I was really devastated. I couldn't sleep that night. I cried for a long time. I wanted to go to a dermatologist, but I couldn't afford to. I was giving all the money I earned to my stepmother as soon as I got it. My acne was getting worse every day. I thought I should at least try some natural remedies. There were so many formulas for anti-acne face masks online. I picked one that used ingredients I could easily find. I just needed almond oil, apple cider vinegar, and honey. I borrowed money from a friend to buy these. That night, I made a mixture and put it on. But when I washed my face in the morning, I was disappointed to see it hadn't worked at all. My grandmother would always say, nature has a cure for everything. I began reading everything I could find about natural treatments for acne. For example, do you know why many formulas use apple cider vinegar? Because vinegar is very effective against bacteria and fungi. As I learned more, I started to believe I could develop my own formula. I was testing new face masks on myself all the time. Although some of them were somewhat effective, I still had acne. One day as I was doing research, I came across some information about a plant I'd never heard of. Women in rural areas use this plant to regulate their hormones during pregnancy. I thought it could work because one of the main causes of acne is hormones. I looked all over the city and I found the dried leaves of this plant in a little shop. That evening, I prepared a new face mask using the leaves and applied it. When I woke up in the morning, I ran to the bathroom to wash my face. When I removed the mask, I was amazed. My acne was completely gone. There was someone else in the mirror. I don't usually cry much, but that morning I bawled my eyes out from happiness. Everyone at work was surprised. They asked me how I did it, but I didn't tell them my secret. I had a friend who had an acne problem like me. I had brought the mixture for her to try. I told her, mm. put this on your face tonight before you go to sleep. Let's see if it works for you. Next morning, I woke up because my phone was ringing. My friend was video calling me. She was so <laughs> excited. There's not one spot left on my face. Bree, this is the magic cure. You can become a millionaire selling this stuff and you'll deserve every penny, she said, thanking me over and over again. I had developed a plant-based formula that makes acne disappear after just one use. I thought I really could get rich. I made an Instagram account. I sent the link to my friend and asked for her opinion. She shared my Instagram account with everyone she knew. She wrote, this worked wonders for me. Get it if you have an acne problem. 
That night, I made six sales over Instagram. The next day, I sold 13. The numbers kept growing. A month later, I was getting nearly 100 orders a day. People wanted even more, but I couldn't produce the masks fast enough. Why? Because I could only work at night so that my stepmother and Sadie wouldn't find out. During the day, I was still working at the call center. I was making a ton of money. I was hiding it all in my room because I had nowhere else to keep it. I had a teddy bear that I got from my ex as a birthday present. I took out all the stuffing and filled it with money. Then I neatly sewed it back. The money kept coming in. I bought another teddy bear. I stuffed it with money just like the other one. I kept buying more and more and ended up with 13 teddy bears in my room. I had to find another hiding place soon because having that many teddy bears didn't look normal. After a while, my worst fear came true. My stepmother called me while I was at work. I picked up the phone. What is this money inside a teddy bear? Is that yours, she asked. I was caught by surprise, so I said something ridiculous. My stepmother said angrily, my friend's son had an appendectomy. Sadie saw all these teddy bears in your room. We thought we could bring one of them to the boy as a gift. While he was playing, he realized it was full of money. Whose money is this? You'll have to explain this to me tonight. I was in such a panic. I ran out of work and jumped into a cab. I was going home. If my stepmother was still at the hospital, I could move the money somewhere safe before she got back. Good plan, but where would I take it? I had an idea. There was someone I could ask for help. I called the friend who was so grateful to me for treating her acne and was thanking me every chance she got. I told her briefly about what was happening. I'll do whatever you want. I'd be so happy to help you, she said. She paused for a moment and screamed, I have a great idea. I have to speak with my dad right now. I was so relieved when I got home because no one was there. Fifteen minutes later, my friend and her dad arrived in a huge RV. We carried the teddy bears to the RV together. My friend's dad said, thanks to you, my daughter got her life back. We are so grateful to you. We went to an RV park all the way across the city. My friend and her dad got in a cab and went home. Yes, this was my friend's idea. I was going to live in their RV for a while. I was feeling really good about myself because from now on, I could do whatever I wanted. I got rid of my old phone so that my stepmother wouldn't be able to reach me and got a new one. I had something important I had to do. I searched online for a lawyer and found one. I met him in his office the next day. I ended up hiring him to look into my dad's case. My stepmother wouldn't tell me where my father was being detained so that I wouldn't be able to visit him. So first off, the lawyer had to find out where my dad was. Then I went and bought a whole bunch of the ingredients I used to make the acne mask. I was going to convert the RV into a small lab. Meanwhile, the lawyer called. He found out which facility my dad was kept in. If you want to visit him, I can come and pick you up in an hour, he said. <laughs> I'd missed my dad so much. The second I saw him in his prison clothes, I started crying. The lawyer left us alone. I told my dad everything. He was so sad to hear what I'd gone through. He said, your stepmother never comes to visit me. I was so worried about you because I had no way of knowing how you were. I'm going to divorce her as soon as I leave this place and I'll be a better father to you. And he hugged me. Then we talked to the lawyer. He said that there wasn't enough evidence to keep my father in jail. Our lawyer turned out to be really good. He quickly found many witnesses to prove that my dad was innocent. After he got out of prison, my dad and I lived in the RV for a while. I was really rich now. We bought a three-story house. I turned the entire top floor into a lab. I hired four people, sorry, five, because my friend who helped me out is now working with me as well. We can now produce 800 acne masks per day. My dad took some time to get himself together and then went to meet my stepmother. She started crying saying, I always loved Bree so much. Bring her back home. We can be the happiest family in the world. My dad said that wasn't an option anymore and that he was going to file for divorce as soon as possible. She kept saying, I beg you, please give me a chance. I missed you and Bree so much, lying to his face. My dad yelled, enough. How dumb do you think we are? You're only after Bree's money and left her right there. My stepmother is still texting my dad several times a day, but thankfully my dad finally saw her true self. He's not buying her cheap lies anymore. If you liked my story, please don't forget to like this video. Thanks so much for listening to me. See you.